Darian. Interesting. I wonder if it's because he's a vampire that something different might happen. Interesting. Um, I'm going to try to open the book myself, though. Oh, he did want it earlier. That's true. Staring disapproves. Oh, because he really did want himself. The book's pull is irresistible. We'll have to try that on another save. You feel changed, bettered for having opened it. Suddenly, you yeah. are capable of anything. Felling mountains, darkening suns, conversing with the dead. Glyphs. I can already converse with the dead. Before your eyes, words slip into your mind, onto your lips, forming words you don't understand. And something is trying to reply. Wisdom, luckily, is our best stat. Right, we have plus three wisdom and we're proficient in a saving throw for wisdom. So we're gonna have a plus five to these rolls. Presumably we can also owl's wisdom ourselves, uh, which is gonna give us advantage and guidance. So yeah, we'll try to turn to the next page of this evil, evil book. That's interesting. Neither Will nor myself can cast a spell. And Eagle's Wisdom, do I not have stat? Well, she might not have the stat uh, advantage spell uh, memorized, but why can't I do it? I think it's because it's a saving throw, not a check. Oh, you're right. Right, Owl's Wisdom and things like that is just for attribute, like skill checks, which this is not. Well, I guess we'll warding bond because this will last through multiple things. Then we'll have the... Oh, resistance, right. Yeah, it's not guidance, it's resistance. We'll do this first. I know it's only a plus one, but we'll be able to have resistance for the future things. Yeah, we can only do one or the other. So we'll do this. 18, what a great number to roll. And then if, if you're gonna take damage, we'll share it with Shadowheart. It'll be fine. Am I reading it backwards? Like a manga. Dart beneath your eyes, warping and twisting. Your head. Resistance also lasts in the country. You almost understand. True. I guess we could have cast it in either order. Um, but I wanted this way because this was only DC 10. So right now I'm like, I'll just do the plus one. Um, I guess yeah, it doesn't matter. Either way, it would have come up to the same. Yeah, all right. Turn another page. But now we'll add the resistance. And we have, I believe, a lot of inspiration. Only an eight. But no problems. The world around you is gone. You can only see those glyphs, only hear those voices. You feel claws moving in the shadows. They pull at you, dragging you closer. I like how at this point it's a saving throw to close the book. But I mean, we've gone this far. We've got to keep going, right? Urge your hand to turn another page. I need to know! Yes! The glyphs scream, branding your mind with strange runes. You see time rewritten. I like how we're doing a dolly zoom. Done. Your future thrumming with power. You struggle to cling to scraps of what you know. Powerful necromancy, you're sure. But it darts away, leaving only hell's screams. The book snaps closed. You've seen too much. What profane knowledge is now seared inside of you, you should never have known. So, unlock the ancient tome. We managed to read most of the book, absorbing some of its necromantic power, but it snapped shut before we could finish it. There must be a way to reach the end. This is as far as I've ever gotten with this. We, we got this far in the multiplayer game. I have no idea what comes next, other than maybe we give it to a Starion or something like that. I don't know. We'll have to see what develops as we go forward. 
They went fine. All right, we got a goblin over there. Nice, nice vantage point. Hmm. What's that? Giddy giddy hole. It's corrupted our sweet Dell. And Dell's been a little bit of a downward slide ever since this brain worm got in him. Proper scary. So this is, I think, an old Selunite temple that has been taken over by these goblins and is apparently where, um, as I say, they brought Halson, but I think Halson and the group of adventurers had intentionally gone here specifically to see what was up and then got captured. Path over there. I wonder. No, let's go. We need. We need help. And we're gonna cross the bridge. Now, Dell is gonna walk through the front, because that's what we do. Because I want to see what the conversations are. But I think I might do the thing where I send a group up over. Oh, there's someone over there. Sharp-eyed nerd. What now? Because we could attempt to go there, but it's brightly lit. There is someone there keeping watch. Another path over this way. What are they doing over there? Tracing bird. I think it does make sense to at least put most people over here. And they'll Oh, never mind. This is off limits. Get to the main gate, or I'll plug you full of arrows. Okay, I guess we're not going that way. Well, I was still thinking I'd leave some people here, not climb up, but leave them here, so if the fight starts, they can move up here and relatively quickly get themselves in the high ground position to do some stuff, which I think might still be an okay idea. The people. One move ahead. I've got a long road ahead. Oh, auto saved. Always a good sign. Breathe deep. And move. Goblin's ahead. A war drum. One of those can summon fighters far and wide. War drum over there. Okay. If a fight does break out, let's try to not let them reach the war drum. Hmm. Might be tricky. Hello! Sappers here. Unless you've got another reason to be here. Feck sight. As the symbol glows, power courses through. And we rested, so our lithid power is rough and ready. Beautiful animal. This should belong to the Nordland Wargata family. Now, we're going to use our lithid powers. Because Dell's getting darker and darker here. I'm sorry, what is this? Forbidden knowledge? From partially deciphering the necromancy of Thay, you gain a plus one bonus to wisdom saving throws and ability checks. Oh. Okay. That works for me. And yeah, we do have this. I may as well go ahead and just throw a guidance on because it'll last for, for 10 turns and it might be relevant uh, if there's a combat. <laughs> Critical success. I, um... Down, Claw! Bad girl! A shadow swims across your vision, and a familiar voice tells you to be calm. You are loved. Easy, lads. We got a true soul coming through. All right, uh... I'm looking for a druid named Halson. Where is he? I don't know any house in your excellness. I heard he was captured breaking into this very camp. Oh, one of them thieves. If he ain't dead, he's in the pits with the rest of them. All right. Tell me what can I expect inside? Lads are celebrating the raid on Joaquin's rest. We kept it a duke, we did. All the way from the city. I'm sure the higher-ups will make sure you get the best of the spoils, your excellness. The boss is in the temple inside. Mithara, too. 
and and priestess gut can show you how many new recruits we got so a couple of things one uh in our multiplayer game because we did some things in different order i actually know where this duke came from but we haven't actually done this i haven't actually gone in to this yet so i don't know what the deal is um the priestess theoretically is the one that that one goblin in town was saying might be able to heal our mindworm issue i don't know if we'll trust the goblin priestess to do it hello level up level four are we ah okay so this brings us to an interesting thing we're gonna pick a feat we do get um wild shape deep wrath or rothe Assume the shape of a Deathrop that can cast Dancing Lights and charges enemies. Deep Roth has a starting health of 23 hit points and increases every two Druid levels. We can also Wild Shape Dire Raven. Shape a Dire Raven that can avoid attention and blind enemies. 13 hit points. Presumably, it probably has a flying move as well as an option. We pick a cantrip here. We could take Poison Spray and then use that staff of, like, bonus poison damage. We could grab resistance in case we, for some reason, don't have Shadowheart in the party, and then we'll still have the option of casting resistance. I don't know how important that is, but I don't really care for most of this. We could consider Produce Flame. That way, Dell would have an option of do producing flame on command since he doesn't have um, the Firebolt spell. Hmm. I don't know. You know what? I'm going to go Poison Spray. This is a little darker. Poison Spray, very exciting to me. I mean, I don't care for Poison Spray in the pen and paper version terribly much either. But it's like, it's a little different. We don't currently have an, an ability to generate poison specifically on command. And so I'm a little bit curious as to what this might do for us. So I'm going to do that just because it'll give us some variety. Um, we could consider changing some of our prepared spells. I mean, we don't have to do this on leveling, but um, in general. Okay, I guess we got an extra spell slot, which it just randomly filled with Ice Knife, which I don't care about. I am going to go and get the... Um, I already have Enhanced Ability memorized. Okay. We could prep Pass Without Trace, in case we do want to do some sneaky, sneaky stuff. No, you're right. The combat spells aren't as important as I'm often in bear form, and so maybe there's an argument for a different kind of cantrip here. Um... Like, Jerusalem is a combat spell, but could be a utility resistance. But no, I'm going to take this for some of the times when I'm not in an animal form for whatever reason. Okay, so here's the thing with the level up. I think that for most characters, assuming you have even stats, so therefore you're not looking for maybe a half feat to, like, fix it, or if you had two odd feats or odd stats, then you'd still want ability proven. Um, my belief is fairly that ability improvement is probably the strongest thing you can do. Um, and in general especially as a spellcaster, I'd probably be most interested in increasing our primary spellcasting stat. Now, this might be less critical for Dell because he's not a primary spellcaster, because a lot of times he does just shift to animal form for combat, in which case his wisdom doesn't really matter that much because we don't care about the wisdom saving throw or anything. Um, but the other thing is, I was wondering if as a rule, I should be like, listen, I'm not going to take ability improvement, despite the fact that I generally consider it to be the the best pick most of the time and force myself to take a feat just because it's somewhat more interesting although i hadn't gotten far enough to plan what that would be for dell here right actor we get proficiency in uh deception and performance i mean it doesn't really vibe with me although we do have decent charisma and also it's a half feat so it increased our charisma by one which doesn't wouldn't do anything for us right 14 to a 15 is kind of pointless alert's pretty cool initiative bonus can't be surprised we do like that a lot um, yeah, there are feats that give plus one ability, but a plus one right now won't do anything for us. We could consider taking it and then taking another half feat at level eight that completes it and brings us to an even number. Um, if I had odd numbered stuff, like let's say I had a wisdom of 17, if there's something in here that gives plus one to wisdom, that would be very appealing, but we don't. So yeah, got that. We got athlete here, which does give us plus one to a stat. Um, and then, uh, when we're prone, we stand up a little easier charger does give us weapon attack and shove charge move i don't know if that works in bear form i suspect the answer is no we don't do crossbow stuff um defensive duelist won't matter to us dual wielder won't matter to us 
Um, Dungeon Delver is interesting. Gain advantage on perception checks made to detect hidden objects. We actually have a pretty good perception. Um, and so getting advantage on us would make us very reliable at finding hidden stuff. Um, trap resistance maybe matters a little bit less. Saving throws to avoid traps maybe matters less who can spot it. But there is potentially some benefit in us taking this for the advantage on perception checks. That's interesting. We could get something to give us plus one strength to get up to 10, but we don't care about our strength, really. Um, going from a minus one to strength checks to a zero to strength checks isn't that relevant. And most of the time we're in animal form where our stats, like our strength dex and con, turns into whatever form we're in. Um, more strength would increase our carrying capacity, but it's not like that's that important. Durable is interesting. Uh, we don't really, the plus one to con again, as is, doesn't do anything unless we do it a second time. Um, but you get full hit points when you take short rest. It's nice, but not a big deal. Animal, elemental adept, I don't think is relevant for us. Great weapon master, heavily armored, lightly armored. Lucky's always nice. I don't know how it like interacts in the game in terms of making pop-ups and stuff, but you get the luck checks so we can get an advantage on attack rolls, ability checks, saving throws, or to make enemies reroll their attack rolls. Um, this probably comes up as a buff you can use in conversations, uh, and maybe there's just a button you can click in combat. That is interesting and sort of universally, it's pretty good. I actually really like this as a feat in 5e, uh, like tabletop, and it might do good for us here. Mage Slayer is interesting, potentially for us, because um, it draws, uh, we get advantages on saving throws, we can use reactions to attack casters in melee combat, which theoretically we're going to try to really um, like hug casters and break concentration maybe. So that's attempting. I don't think we care about getting some bonus cantrips or anything like that. Martial Adept. I don't know if this is usable in animal form. Movement speed increases. Difficult terrain doesn't slow you down. Gain proficiency in a saving throw category might be handy. Although um, it's whatever ability we raise, we get proficiency in that uh, stat saving throws. So we've already got proficiency in wisdom, so yeah, I don't know. Ritual caster. We could gain a couple of ritual spells from like the wizards or something like that, but it's a savage attacker. This is says when making weapon attacks. Now, does it cast consider our natural weapons as weapons? Like the savage attacker work for this. Roll your damage jack twice and use the highest result. Savage attacker is thematically very on brand for what we do. Yeah, mobile lets you uh, avoid uh, attacks from opportunity. That is true. Sentinel. Um, that's interesting. So enemies within melee range, when they attack an, an ally, we get to do a free attack against that target. We are tanky, and that sort of works with that. Sharpshooter, shield master, no. Skilled. Skilled is actually fairly tempting um, because we can just gain proficiency in three extra skills. And we have decent stats. Like, we could go and do this so that we've got someone in the group with a decent med medicine. Um, if we're going to get a little darker, we might decide to use a little bit more intimidation um, and or deception here, which is a possibility. Um, acrobatics, maybe. I don't know. It's a possibility. Smell Sniper, no. Tavern Brawler, no. Tough gives you a bunch of hit points, but again, we don't care about that because of our animal forms. Uh, Warcaster, Weapon Master, I don't think is that useful. So, having looked at these things at a glance, yeah, I can see maybe a, um, an... an, an uh, an argument made for mobile. Lucky is pretty good. Skilled is kind of tempting, or we could also st we could still just take ability improvement and put into wisdom, which would I believe give us an extra spell slot as well. Reddit says savage attack doesn't work in wild form. Well, there you go. I'm even wondering if um, like does Mage Slayer and Sentinel work in our animal form? I mean, probably. Oh, this is make a reaction to make a weapon attack. Again, does our animal form count as weapon attacks? For this, probably. Yeah, Sentinel does, yeah. With, no, with, I, I've, obviously Wisdom 17 doesn't do anything, uh, Jorman, but if we take ability improvement, we can do, we put two points in the Wisdom. So we go to 18, which does do something. Um, and this is potentially good. We do actually do a lot of Wisdom checks, right? Like, I might not care about it that much in terms of improving our saving throw DC, but improving our perception, insight, uh, wisdom checks and saves for like reading this necromancy book um, is still pretty valuable. 
Perception gets boosted here as well. Oh yeah, Sentinel stops people from moving away. That's right. If they draw an attack of opportunity and we hit, that stops them from moving. I think... You know what? I think we'll grab Sentinel. Yeah, Sentinel sounds could fit the shapeshifter. I think it really does work well with the role we're trying to do. It's going to be that much more insight in, uh, in incentive for, for Delures to continue to act as sort of a tank, get up in people's face in bear mode, and this will help lock it down. Hell, maybe maybe it's at level 8 we do take the Mage Slayer, and then we're like that much better at just, you know, locking people down in, in melee range. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Rather than take a stat improvement, even though I generally think the stat improvement's pretty good until you get like 20. There is work now, Shadowheart could be a little bit different because she we do use her as a very primary spellcaster, in which case the extra wisdom might be that much more enticing. Um, Thaumaturgy, can you cast it on other people or is it just yourself? You can cast it on other people. I don't know how it's described compared to the others. Oh yeah, she only needs one wisdom. That's interesting. What half beat gives you that? Although, what we might do actually with her is put a point into wisdom, put a point into dex. I think that's what we have to do for her. We have to fix two odd stats. This will improve her AC by a step because she's not wearing heavy armor. Improve her AC by a step and a few other things. We can't cast Thaumaturgy on others. Yeah, I think I think it's just so strong with her because of her odd stats. I think this is what we have to do. Thematically, light's not a good fit for her because, you know, goddess of darkness and all that. And I'm not too keen. She doesn't need produce flame. So we'll take Thaumaturgy in case it comes up. It might not, but we'll take it anyway. All right. I think that's a pretty no-brainer fix for her. Sharp as ever. Now, Will... I since we're changing domain fix stats and respect. Well, I'd probably keep the domain just because it's part of her story, but we could respect her from scratch and reset all our stats. That's true. Cantrip wise. Friends is interesting. Oh, you know what? We should have someone with mage hand to give us a few more options. And another spell. We could even consider doing hold first. Uh, you know what? Um, I do like Misty Step, generally speaking, but I think we don't need it on him. I think I might take a mirror image to give us a defensive option on him. Although he does have the uh, the cold armor. Uh, you know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to take Shatter instead. We're going to give ourselves an uh, area effect spell. Yeah. Give Shadow Hard Warcaster out of an instant saving throw for concentration. It is pretty good, although I think fixing the stats is pretty nice. Mine's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it is a saving throw, right? So, um, a lot of times I get frustrated by the things that are a save. Because if they make their save, then it's like, well, I kind of feel like I did nothing. At least here, they'd still take half damage. This has been good if we run into another little group of little spiders or something like that. Does the game let Warlock spend a feat for Eldritch Adept? Wasn't on everyone list. No. Now, for Will... It actually is going to be very useful if we can make his charisma an even number because he does use his charisma for his two-hit bonus with Eldritch Blast, plus bonus damage. So it's really good. Now, he only needs a plus one to come out to an even number, which means we could consider giving something like um, Actor, for example. Although we don't really use his skill checks for deception and, and performance, so that doesn't matter too much. Um, I don't know if anything else gives a bonus to charisma specifically. Because what I'm thinking is we probably want to do ability score improvement as well, just to make his dexterity an even number, because that's actually going to be super valuable for him. So, yeah, so my assumption, uh, Zladelli, with all my characters all the time, is I'm going to be doing ability score improvement. But I'm looking for a reason to do something else. Yeah, you're right. Performer also does charisma, gives us musical instrument proficiency, but kind of sort of who cares. Oh, Resilient doubles the saving throw bonus. Does it? It says gain proficiency. Doesn't say anything about doubling it, but maybe it do. Still, how often do you do charisma saving throws, right? So I think I'll ability score improvement for the obvious. Equal out the charisma, equal out the dexterity. It's a pretty strong move that we will not regret. So let's do that. Still alive. Still so that's progress. Chasing bird. 
All right, Asterion. Just defeat. All right. Now that's interesting, because with Asterion, we definitely want to bring his dexterity to an 18. But there's not really another obvious choice. I mean, if I was going ability score improvement, um, I could go dexterity. I could go and equal out his wisdom just to improve a saving throw and perception checks. But it's not as huge of a deal. Where something like dual wielder is very sexy. Yeah, I agree. Because we can dual wield weapons that aren't necessarily light, which means we could do double rapiers, for example. And we get a plus one bonus to AC when wielding a melee weapon in each hand, which is very nice. I mean, half the reason we'd want to put a point into dexterity is to improve